BLM, Black Lives Matter, is Islamic movement, Islamic Marxist movement. Probably sponsored from somewhere like Iran or Hezbollah or something like this. But it's wholly Islamic. What is the one thing you cannot criticize in America? It is Islam. You can criticize Christianity. You can close down Christian churches in the name of COVID, but you can't touch mosques. So you can see what's going on there. The Biden is working towards creating an Islamic America with his idea of economic equality. It means he's going to have to lower the living standards of people down to create that. The thing about Black Lives Matter and Blacks, that they're a minority, they're not a minority. In the world, the Blacks outnumber white people of many times, 20 times. Muslims are not a minority. There's a billion of them. And, and you can see in that, to saying these people claiming they're minorities is to feed into the heads of Western people or ignorant of the world. They're totally geographically ignorant. It's about the data and statistics relating to the world's global populations, how many people there are of different cultures that far outnumber white Western democratic people. And you can see from that that Joe Biden is working as a puppet Man cannot speak, he cannot get two or three words together without stumbling. The man, and that's why he's there as a puppet. If he wins, if he becomes president, and we pray that he doesn't, um, maybe Americans can't see America from as an outsider. But as an outsider, who we'll, we'll sort of basically observe the world quite closely over many, many, many decades. And I go back to what Alatola Khomeini said in 1979 and 1980 when they had the Iranian revolution. Uh, revolution created revolution. Uh, it was an Islamic revolution, not an Iranian revolution, an Islamic revolution against the Shah, right? And that's what it is. And, it, and that has been then fermenting through the decades since then, since 1980. And using various means, infiltrating universities, and then using political correctness, which is a weapon, to make it sound like they're doing one thing, but unless you know really what's going on, another thing's going on altogether. They call it progressive, and actually it's regressive, because when you ban freedom of speech, you cannot progress the conversation past its limit. You've cancelled the sovereign mind, in other words, you've cancelled knowledge out, in other words. In other words, cancel culture is about cancelling knowledge. Not just cancelling history, it's about cancelling knowledge altogether. Because if you have an insight that says something is not quite as you say it is to someone else, and that's cancelled because a mob's going to attack you, well, that's basically a revolution against free speech and a revolution against democracy, a revolution against Western society, and a revolution against white people themselves. So when they say you want to protect minorities, the minority group in this world are white people. This is the great lie, if you like. Maybe they've been dominant in industry because of the climates they've had to deal with was created them, opposite to people in Africa where climates created them. And everyone's created by the climates they're in. That's that's how that's just a very simple analogy of how different cultures and races develop. But I digress. The thing is, white people are a minority on the planet, being, and there's a billion Muslims at least, 1.3 billion Chinese. They're said to be a minority. They're a minority. There's a billion Indians. They're said to be a minority. There's a billion Muslims. They're said to be a minority. How are these billions of people, minority groups? Because when they come into Western countries, they do not so separate themselves culturally or in any language sense or spiritually from their, where they came from. No one does that. So they're still spiritually, linguistically, and customs and culture and food and con 
they're basically connected to wherever their origins were. To say they're a minority group in the West and it's total baloney. Absolute dangerous baloney. So there you are. BLM movement is an Islamic movement. Train, or African Islamic movement, if you like. When the people are there using violence to try and force you to vote. They're straight out of somewhere in Africa. We've seen that in over the, since Africans have got themselves. So Africa's evolving and they're adapting and they're, they're kind of getting better and better. But we have seen many times in Angola and Liberia and all these other places in Africa where they've had these violent revolutions where people have been intimidated into not voting or voting for whatever, then you can see where the origins of this BLM movement is, even though there may be racism in America. It's not true, really, that racism holds black people back, because there are plenty of us down in uh, American black people were astonishingly successful in every field. So race plays no part in this or the then it's another excuse to be violent by the, well, whoever's behind the BLM, which is Islamic movement, which wants to destroy the West. It's that simple. It makes no bones. Muslim, Islam does not make any bones whatsoever about wanting to destroy America because they chant all the time, death to America, death to America, death to America. Now they're saying death to America in America, which means they're adapting the Iranian chant. They've exposed themselves otherwise through the people who are aware that this BLM in the Islamic movement and Biden works is a puppet basically of Islam. That's all there is to it.